The following presentation of the Daily Mass is made possible by your generous donations to Catholic Television of San Antonio. The Archdiocese of San Antonio and CTSA invite you to join us in celebrating these sacred mysteries, listening to God's Word, and partaking of spiritual communion. Welcome to the Daily Mass. We're gathered again today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we gather here today, one will pray for peace for our world, and also the 27th week of the year, this is the last day of it, it's one of my favorite sets of prayers. The prayer after communion summarizes what we're about, that we may become what we've consumed. And just all the prayers and the, op the collect that we're about to do, I've been asking God to grant what we dare not ask. But what we do dare to ask, what we've been told to ask for from our God, is forgiveness. So we can open ourselves more completely to the mysteries God has for us and the gifts that God has for us. Let us begin asking forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede on our behalf. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace and mighty God. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Thus says the Lord, let the nations bestir themselves and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit in judgment upon all the neighboring nations. Apply the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come and tread, for the winepress is full. The vats overflow, for great is their malice. Crowd upon crowd in the valley of decision. For near is the day of the Lord in the valley of decision. Sun and moon are darkened and the stars withhold their brightness. The Lord roars from Zion, and from Jerusalem raises his voice. The heavens and the earth quake, but the Lord is a refuge to his people, a stronghold to the children of Israel. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, am your God, dwelling on Zion, my holy mountain. Jerusalem shall be holy, and strangers shall pass through her no more. 
And then on that day, the mountain shall drip, drip new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and the channels of Judah shall flow with water. A fountain shall issue from the house of the Lord to the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be a waste, and Edom a desert waste, because of violence done to the people of Judah, because they shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall abide forever, and Jerusalem for all generations. I will avenge their blood, and not leave it unpunished. The Lord dwells in Zion. The word of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the, let the many isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord. Before the Lord, all of the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all people see his glory. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Light dawns for the just, and gladness for the upright of heart. Be glad in the Lord, you just, and give thanks to his holy name. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. According to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. While Jesus was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out to him and said, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breast at which you nursed. He replied, Rather blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We get these very tiny gospels sometimes, and you know that when you get a very tiny gospel, there's usually a very profound meaning in that that the church does not want us to miss. Because remember, they're taking these gospels out of the whole gospel and saying, this is what you get the 27th week of the year on Saturday morning. So when we look at that, I always, or the last few weeks, I've been pondering how we hear the Word of God anyway, and how seriously we take that. As the Catechism of the Year has been going through the Ten Commandments, and how we live as holy, and the things that are required of us. And as a pastor, the number of people who say to me, well, Father, we just can't get to church with all the sporting events that our kids have. And it takes everything I have, and sometimes I do respond. Well, I guess that's your new God. I mean, if that's where your time is going. Because God is very clear that it isn't about any of the trappings or whatever else, but it's hearing the word of God and observing it. And some people might say, well, it's a very selfish God that makes us go and worship. But it's more than that. God calls us because he knows that we need this. We can't live good Christian lives without the grace of what we get in this space. And I realize I'm talking to people going to church on a Saturday morning. I get that. But for your um, family that may not be following through, God, God knows that we need this. And the days that we may feel like, I just don't want to go to church today, well, if I don't show up, it's very obvious to everybody that I didn't show up. 
But just think, if on a regular Sunday you showed up and it was just Logan here. I mean, that would, it's a very awkward feeling already in this space to have just the few people here that we have here. But just think if you showed up on a Sunday and think, this is depressing. Why am I here? But together, we can look at all the issues and the problems of the world and we can say we can make a difference. By living this gospel, by truly hearing what God is calling us to, we can make a difference. And if you realize that conservatively, we can affect the lives of 10 people in each of our, li in each of our lives. If each of those 10 people that we impact as church were to impact 10 more, imagine how quickly that we could bring a change in this world. But we're too busy letting people be what they believe is right. We don't want to offend people and hurt people. But it's gotten sort of crazy. You know, we think that a simple commandment, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. I had somebody not long ago go, Jesus H. And I looked at them and I said, you know, I'm a priest, right? And they're like, well, yeah, that doesn't count. There's an H in the middle. I said, I'd like to be there when you explain that one to God. And all these things which seem petty have deep rooted meanings. Who likes their name made fun of? All these things that we could talk about forever, but we won't do because we also have a time slot. But God's calling us to truly hear. And when we hear, and as somebody who teaches, I know when the students have heard, when they can repeat back in their own words and have a true grasp and understanding of the material which I have given them. So when we look at that, where in our lives are we still lacking that true understanding? Where are we doing things because we know we have to and not because we feel the need and the desire to do that? What are the things that we still need to do in order to truly live as God's children, members of God's family, God's adopted sons and daughters? And we, when we answer that question, which we have to on a regular basis, honestly, then we have our task list for the next period of time. We say, okay, these are the things I'm going to work at. This is how I am going to work more at making sure I am hearing God's word. And then if I'm hearing it, there's no option other than to live the word of God. Together, we bring before our Heavenly Father our needs and concerns. For the church and for pastoral leaders, may the Lord continue to guide them in their minds of service and ministry to his people. Let us pray to the Lord. For elected and appointed officials, may the wisdom of God inform their efforts toward creating a more just society. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are alienated from their faith, may God bring upon them his faithful and healing presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Our prayer. For all married couples, that in imitation of Christ the bridegroom, they may love and honor their spouse through a total offering of their lives for the other. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, May the calling of Christ echo in our hearts so we may act upon his word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died marked as Christ's own, may they, through the mercy and grace of God, rest in his eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout our world, especially in the Middle East, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty Father, as you hear the prayers of your church, help us today to be able to hear your voice and to live always as your disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for him, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you, in pleasing in which you are pleased to redeem us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just to give you thanks and to raise you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and have filled her with life by the power of the Holy Spirit, and never ceased through her to gather the whole human race into one, manifesting the covenant of your love. She dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church, as one voice, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who has walked with us in the journey of light, life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when his once first disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, 
We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, especially in the Middle East, by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo, our bishop, Mike and Gary's auxiliaries, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. Remember especially today, Pat, and all who have died, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, martyrs, St. Anthony de Padua, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now can dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let's offer to one another a sign of peace, and especially pray for peace for our world. Peace. Peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But when say the word, in my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe all that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already here, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let's pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Although that so as to be transformed into what we have consumed. Well, for everybody that likes photography of all sorts and whatever it's going to be a big day what time is it actually that it's going to happen like around noon the annular eclipse not a total eclipse like we're going to have in april but this is one that will the ring of what they call the ring of fire so it should be throughout san antonio and um, i have a friend who we're prepared to drive if for some reason clouds or whatever else get in the way we're going to find it i do have to be back for mass so i'll have to figure that out but um be safe. Do not look at the sun. Get the glasses. I have a special filter for my camera. So if you want to see it, if I can, I will have pictures online. Do not look at the sun. You need to have a um, have the special glasses. Even with it mostly blocked, you have to look at it that, that way. So thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to all those that make this possible. And please, as we're watching this, use the sponsors for whatever you might need. I know Kielbasa, they... They are huge in supporting many things, so please help support them. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, proclaiming the good news with your lives. help this very important ministry to continue by sending a donation to Catholic Television of San Antonio, 2718 West Woodlawn, San Antonio, Texas, 78228, or contribute online at ctsa.tv.